Hey you who mess with JS, Aegis here and welcome to my new video on JavaScript and Node.js. In this video we'll be talking about exports versus module.exports. The reason why I picked this particular subject is because I've seen that many people are misunderstanding how uh, Node.js modules uh, work and I've decided to create this video just to kind of satisfy the broad audience and help people understand exports versus module exports. So I'm going to go and open my Sublime text. I've already created two files. One is called main.js and the other one is called requireme.js. So in main.js, we're just going to require this file here and just show how things really work. So let's go ahead. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to say use strict so my uh, JS hint doesn't go crazy. I'm going to go here as well. And since I know that I'll be using uh, some thing, some global things like console and stuff, I need to say global console require. I'm not sure if that's necessary, but uh, why why are you giving me errors? Okay, good. So here we're just gonna immediately require this file for start. So require me and. Um, we actually gonna say um, let required files equal to um, and then we're just gonna for now console log that so if we go here say iojs actually let's try node main okay node now supports let as well which is really awesome so awesome let is equivalent to var. If you're not familiar with let, you can watch my video on ECMAScript 6 and it's, I think, second video in the series. So I'm explaining how let works and stuff like that. So if you're unfamiliar, make sure to go to my YouTube channel and uh, check uh, course on ECMAScript 6. Okay, so now basically we're set up uh, the thing that we're gonna use to, to explain how exports versus module that exports work. So let me start. So so every time that every time we use require in Node.js, in return we get module that exports. So let's just say so every time we use require, we get this. So this is what require is returning. So it's returning module that exports, which is referenced to an empty object by default. So what does that mean? So if we, for example, go ahead now here and ex and console log module that exports and actually let's comment out this for now. So if we uh, console log module that exports, we're going to get an empty object. And that's a, that empty object is what module that exports is referenced to. Also, if we console log exports, we're going to get same empty object. The reason why is because exports and module that exports are referenced to the same empty object. And that is the point of everything. So what does that mean? Basically, it means this. So every time you use exports dot something and it's actually let's write this in a in a our required me. So let's do something like this. So exports dot something is equal to let's say an object and that's like uh, it that object has a function get for example so every time you use exports dot something some property you are attaching this property here or this object here to module that exports so this is equivalent to module dot exports dot something is equal to this so this thing and these thing are completely are completely same things so now if we say exports that something and we export that and and we require it in this file if you run it nothing will happen because we need to console log it we're gonna get an object with a property something which is another object with which has a function get so what did happen what happened right now here is that exports dot something is attached to module that exports. So if we actually go ahead here and console log module dot exports, we will get the same thing. And if you don't believe me, 
let's just do this. So as you can see, I'm here, and actually, and actually, module that exports is being printed first because it's being returned first. So here, if we also go ahead, I'm actually not sure what's gonna happen here now, but let's try. So okay, here. Uh, module that exports is, is actually not seeing it, but okay, here it is. So basically, every time you use exports, you're just attaching this thing to module that exports. So this thing here, like we said, is equivalent to module that exports dot something. It's literally the same. It's literally the same thing. Uh, another thing to point out is that whatever you do, make sure that you never break this reference with exports and module that exports. When I say that, I mean this. So if you go ahead and say something like exports is equal to a function, what you did now is you broke the reference. So exports right now is not pointing anymore to uh, module that exports, or it's not pointing to the object where module that exports is pointing. So now, for example, let's actually see this. So Right now, this export is pointing to some random new function. And let's go ahead and say console log on that function. So if we go ahead here now in main.js and try to console log this, and let's clear the screen. So if we try to log this, we're gonna get an empty object. And if you're wondering why, it's because this exports right now has nothing to do with module that exports anymore. So like we said, this require right now this require right now returns module that exports and we haven't added anything to module that exports since our exports is now referenced to something completely different. So if you ever do something like this, make sure that require won't work because require returns module that exports. So every time you call require, it will call module that exports and which is reference to an object where we add certain things. So every time we either use module that exports or exports by itself by saying exports dot something, we are adding that something to the object. So if we console log it now, you're gonna see that we got our reference back. So exports, exports dot something is now uh, adding uh, that object to an object where module that exports is referenced to. So yeah, if you're wondering why, so if to get back to exports versus module.exports, I'm gonna tell you just one thing, which is trivial. I mean, it's almost the same. Like I said, it's all up to you if you're gonna say something like module.exports.property, or if you're gonna say exports.property. So right here is like minus module. So basically what we are doing here is you're just avoiding a few more characters to write. Or if you're gonna do it the way I do it, I simply say module.exports and I just, uh, I don't know, export a class, let's say controller. And I usually what I do is I define that uh, controller up in the file. So var controller is equal to, I don't know, an object. And then I define my uh, functions here and then I just export once. That's the that's the style I like to use because all my modular exports are the, at the end of my files. And I just like to, to keep it simple like that because I always know where I export and what I export. So yeah, another thing to mention is that you can't use both. So module that exports will always overwrite exports. So let's actually show that. So uh, if we go ahead here and at any place in the file, if we say module.exports is equal to five. So now you most likely uh, think that both of these will be your like, okay, module.exports is five, but also we are adding this, this thing to module.exports as well. So we're gonna get five and we're gonna get this function. Well, not the case. If you run this program, we'll only get five. And why? So let's actually show that. So if we go here, and uh, change this and actually say like var x is equal to that and if we go here and say something like type of x 
And if you run this, we're gonna get a number. And if you remove this, or actually no, let's let's have this function here as well. Let's have this function here as well. So if we have this function here as well, and if we uh, if you run this, I'm actually not sure about it. So okay, so type of the export was function. Let's see what we're gonna get when we export the uh, using exports. You see, we're gonna get an object. So what happens here is simple. Uh, when you use module that exports, whatever you export is of that type. So for example, if you export an object, your module that exports will be an object. If you export a function, your module that exports will be a function. So what does that mean? That means one very simple thing. So if we uncomment this right now, and if we go back to our file, and if we go down here and say X and invoke it, and if you run it, we'll get um, that function. So for example, when you use modular exports and when you export a function like that, you can immediately call that function. Whereas if you use exports instead, and if we try to counter log that now, you, we're gonna get it X is not a function. And the reason why is obviously is because that on module that exports, we need to hit that property. So instead of X, we need to say X dot something and we don't need two dots for sure here. And then if you run this again, we're gonna get um, that function. So every time you export using exports, you're exporting an object because exports is pointing to that object. So basically that is a difference between exporting using this and using it exports. So every time you export using exports, you will get an object. If we put a number here, and save this and run it again. Of course, this is not a uh, this is not a function anymore. So um, what the heck? Let's try again. So obviously we can't run it. We need to console log it because this is not a function anymore. So if we console log x dot something now, it's five. But still, you can see it's an object. So if we just go ahead and instead of x dot something, if we console log x, you will see that we have an object and something is five. But if we, for example, go back here and assign five to module at exports, we're gonna have a number, type of a number. So it's type of number and five. So that's a very important aspect for you to remember is that when you export using module at exports, the uh, you are kind of referencing to that type of data so this is number and that was a function and it was a whatever it was when you use exports you're exporting an object every time so this something now is an object that has a function that console logs this so that is the difference okay let me just see my uh the tutorial i wrote for the blog did i miss something so uh Yes, we, we mentioned uh, mo most of it, I guess. And um, yeah, and yeah, another thing. So when we talked about these references, when we talk about using exports like this and referencing it to something else, we said that this won't work. So if you want to keep your references in order, you would do it like this and you will have all this code written in the blog as well. So you would say modular exports is equal to exports and is equal to some object. And I'm gonna explain this as well. So if I go up here and create var some object, and uh, let's actually just give it, let's let it be a number. So right now, if you go ahead and uh, console log module that exports and console log exports, and if you run the file, you will see that both modular exports now and exports are referenced to the same thing and they all of them gonna give us the, the same number, which is 12. So this is also what people usually do. They do something like this and then they, so now export has the value of some object and modular export has a value of object, of export, sorry. So 
now basically this is in sync it's referenced properly so i think this is basically it so in the end if you wonder why one or another so basically if you're doing this you're doing it so you avoid module so instead of typing module dot exports dot something you type exports dot something I will suggest you my way what I do is I for example create a controller up here with some functions there with some properties there and then I, at the end of my file I simply say module dot exports is equal to that controller and then I export the entire object here which is my controller or a class or call it whatever JavaScript has different ways of calling it or using ECMAScript 6 you can just say class my class and then uh, uh, you create a constructor and uh, have your properties here and then you have your method, uh, method methods here and so on and so on and you can just export your class completely like this this is a ECMAScript 6 way so I actually started writing I actually started using class I'm not really sure if, if node supports class right now IOJS does and I'm actually not sure quite sure if we need that I don't think so so yeah so actually it does node.js obviously now so does support classes so you can do that so for example if we do something like this and export a class and we have a, this methods one so uh, let's say console log something and if we go to our main.js and uh, here we require it so right now if we go ahead and console log x if we console log x uh, we're gonna get a, a function and let's see actually what we're doing here okay so I think we should probably be able to do something like this now let's see so so actually let's say uh, let's see if we can do something like this and here we can just pass x and epsilon and then here we should be able to say var calc is, is new x and pass 5 and 6 I'm not sure and if we console calc Okay, that's strange. So new X. Okay, this should be a, a export a class now, which is this guy, right? So, or maybe we need to pass in a constructor here, and uh, this X is equal to X, and this dot epsilon is equal to epsilon. Maybe like this, I guess, right? So right now, yeah, we get a. <laughs> Sounds strange. Okay. Anyway, I, I don't. Uh, you can check my video on classes on ECMAScript six course. So basically, this was the video on understanding exports versus modular exports. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or anything to add, or maybe if I made some certain mistake in recording this, if I gave some inaccurate information, I would really like you to to to, to comment and to to let me know. So once again, thanks for watching the video, and I hope you will mess with the JS. See you in the next video.